Good morning. Before we start this session, I just want to express our great uh, satisfaction, not only for the presence of such a strong Russian delegation, yesterday is the Prime Minister, uh, as the President, today is the Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Shubalov, and a uh, strong group of um, business leaders, um, members of the Cabinet. But I want to use this opportunity to underline the strong cooperation which uh, the Forum has with the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. We have worked together uh, during the last years and this session here is a co-branded session, co-branded between the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum and the World Economic Forum. And I want to thank you for the spirit of cooperation and um, we are uh, determined to continue this type of um, um, partnership also in the future. So I turn the microphone to you, Tom. Great, because I think we have a video uh, yeah. that's going to run first before we introduce the panel.
Well, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Russia's next steps to modernization. We have a great panel this morning. We're certainly sorry the president isn't with us, but we're really pleased to have the deputy prime minister, uh, Igor Shuvlov, with us. Um, uh, next, Igor is uh, Indra Nui, um, the uh, CEO of uh, Pepsi. Um, we've got Patrick Krohn, the chairman chief executive of uh, Alstom, and uh, last but certainly not least, Jim Alba, president chief executive of Boeing Commercial Airplanes. Um, I just want to begin and ask all four uh, panelists the same broad question, and each of you can take your own slice on it from your own direction. And, uh, and Deputy Prime Minister, we'll, we'll certainly start with you. You know, Russia is a, a unique country in, in, in many ways, but in one, in one way in particular, um, uh, it's a country uh, enormously rich in natural resources, uh, but that's enormously rich in, in human resources. Uh, it's a country with a long history and tradition of uh, science and mathematic learning and institutes to promote that. Uh, and yet, uh, a country blessed and in some ways burdened also by having so many natural resources that sometimes you don't develop those other muscles. Deputy Prime Minister, how do you see that challenge of you know, balancing these two now? Because it's very easy to fall back on your natural resources and not tap your human resources, how is that a challenge for the government in this broader question of how do we take Russia into the knowledge economy? Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And first, I would start with one of the four eyes you just seen in video. One is very important for us now is investments. Mm -hmm. And I spoke with the head of Federal Anti-Monopoly Committee this morning. And I can congratulate PepsiCo with the consent they received yesterday to finalize all the formalities with Wimbledon to take over the company. I think this is one of the greatest deals in the country, and it shows that the climate, uh, investment climate is changing, and best regards from everybody from the you know, economic side from the government, and I think this is a very good opportunity for others. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shogov. Thank, Thank you. By the way, PepsiCo has been in my country since 50s, and this, you know, well-known, popular, well-respected company, and well presented on the market, and we hope that with this purchase, with this takeover, you will show how you will cooperate with Russian investors, with Russian people who are, you know, major consumers of the product, and I, and I wish all the best. Thank you. And then we're here with a group of people. Actually, we represent different institutions, and a colleague of mine and a friend, Ilvira Nabiulna, who is the Minister for Economic Development, and previous Minister for Economic Development, and now the President for the biggest bank in Russia's Bear Bank, German Greff, and another big bank, which is very uh, known, well known in, um, in the world, VTB, VTB, Andrei Kostin, and heads of the regions and uh, other institutions. Actually, we represent different institutions, but we are the same, we one team. And we work under the strong political leadership in order to uh, in order to, you know, bring our country to an absolutely different stage of development. We all work hard in order to achieve which is called New Russia, and we, uh, we understand that by 2020, which was outlined in 2008, we need to achieve uh, and to develop Russia as one of the most comfortable countries to live in, where human beings could be uh, well accepted by all the institutions and where you can develop all your talent, uh, talents and where future generations would like to live and invest. And, you know, I can talk about my country and endless, and, you know, because I love my country. And with all the difficulties we face and with all the difficulties we have, I believe and we believe, uh, our team believe, that we are um, a new, unique country in all respects. You mentioned uh, mineral resources, you mentioned human resources. My personal belief is that we are a, a very rich country, but mostly the, the real wealth is people. Um, 
Um, German Gref, for instance, is always complaining that the skills, labor skills, uh, are not very good, and we need to, you know, to do a lot in order to improve it. But at the same time, you can imagine that uh, all, everybody in our country all get um, uh, good education at schools, and very, a lot of people uh, get higher education. Now, nowadays, it's very you know, modern to get even secondary, second higher education, and um, that concept, which is called long, li long life learning, is well accepted in the country. And we have many people who you know, always try to um, uh, modernize their skills. And I believe that with all our history, with all our culture, with all our skills, even nowadays skills, we are a very talented nation. And we, you know, we have shown many times in different aspects in space, in chemistry, in you know, metal industry, car producing, whatever. Um, we had very good examples, we had bad examples, sometimes mistakes, but we are human beings. And, but you know, if you look at the country and if you read the history thoroughly, you will understand that you know, in uh, many aspects, Russia was able to show that we can achieve if we want. If we can combine all our efforts, in, if we are, um, you know, if we are all, if we all see the final aim we dream of, and if we have enough resources, we, we can achieve. Let me ask a specific question. Um, you know, if you think about it, Google is a half Russian company. Um, Sergey Brin uh, came from a Russian family. Um, uh, to our great advantage, the United States, though, his innovation was hatched and harvested in the United States. But I'm sure there are many others like him in Russia today. What would make entice the next Sergey Brin, who is sitting out there in one of your institutes or schools or whatever, not to come to Stanford and Palo Alto, but to stay in Russia now and, and, uh, and launch his new company? I don't see any problem if people, you know, leave the country and get education somewhere, including the States. I think it's even for better of my country. Mm -hmm. The more people we send to abroad for their education, and if they return, and we have many people who got education in Stanford, and we have, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I see Ksenia now, who works for Sberbank, and she uh, studied at Harvard University, MIT, MIT, yeah, am I right? And, you know, many people now are coming back and they believe in future, they trust, and they, you know, they, they, they feel they are Russians. Mm -hmm. But I don't see any problem if people decide for their residence uh, other countries. It's okay, it's modern life. People should, you know, uh, choose their permanent residentship and uh, we don't see any problem with that. It's not all Soviet time, you know, when we thought that all, you know, people, talented people should stay 100% within the country and mm -hmm. there were some limits even for uh, going abroad. Nowadays, nothing of that exists. And um, carry on with people. Uh, you, can you imagine the size of the territory? You can fly almost 10 hours from you know, Kaliningrad, which is you know, based on the shores of the Baltic Sea, to the Pacific. It's 10 hours flight. And it's still the same continent and the same country. And the Pacific side where if you fly from the north to the south, it's approximately five and a half hours to fly. It, it, and it's just Russia. And uh, to the east, our immediate neighbor is the United States. And we are separated by the Bering Strait. And our natural neighbor, Americans, almost, you know, when the people say something about America and Americans, we always, you know, turn to the west and Americans always to the east, but vice versa. We are, you know, where natural, uh, na natural neighborhood is east. Our governor in Alaska said she could actually see you. Um, <laughs> Welcome, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, so there's a huge territory with different climate zones, with very comfortable climate zones, with very cruel, where people maybe cannot live permanently, we have Siberia, we have Western Siberia, Eastern Siberia, we have the Black Sea side, the Baltic Sea, different, different areas, Moscow, St. Petersburg, 
more, uh, most developed towns and we have other towns which are not maybe very popular, popular amongst um, people in the West and investors, but we have towns like Kazan, and I see the head of the Tatarstan, um, the region um, along the uh, uh, Volga River, and uh, other towns which are very big, the population is over one million people, and where, you know, you can find very modern atmosphere for youth, mm -hmm. for students, good universities, hospitals, and so on and so forth. And uh, you know, with 145 well-educated people, with all the people speaking one language, for instance, you know, even in England, in London, just in London, you can find people speaking one language but mm, not being able to understand each other because if you have someone with Queen's language and, you know, Cockney, people will not understand each other. With all the dialects and all the accents in the country, all speak the same language and it's understandable and I think this is very, you know, this is very good for future, and this is unique. Great. Thank you very much. And just a minute, we, <laughs> at the same time, we had 180 other nationalities and over 100 different languages. And all people speak Tatars, you know, other languages, Finnish and others, and they all accept Russian as a native language. Different cultures, different religions. Again, if I come back to the point of Kazan, you see, you know, in the heart of the town, Kazan, just in the Kremlin, you see the mosque and the Orthodox church just standing next to each other. And people who are serving, you know, in the mosque and the uh, Orthodox church, they are just friends. They communicate, even they belong to different uh, uh, churches, different religions. And along with that, we have, as you mentioned, human um, natural resources we have everything if you want to produce something in the country you can just explore the soil russian soil is very rich not only with oil and gas anything you you need for any other industries you will get in russia Great. Well, let's hear from the others okay um uh, i'm sold i'd like to buy something right now but i um, but uh, i would like to yeah. carry on yeah, no, like. no. <laughs> um indra you can Pepsi, global, um, in so many product lines, you can buy companies anywhere, um, yet you've gone through uh, you know, a big effort here to buy a big uh, consumer products company um, uh, in Russia. Why? And what, what have you learned from that experience? Yeah. I'm going to sound like I'm just picking up where Minister Shivalov left off. But uh, we love Russia. We love doing business in Russia. We love what Russia stands for. Uh, we've been there for 50 years, and in the last 10 years, we've invested more than $3 billion in Russia. 